Woods in time. End zone. It's a touchdown. Trey Sean Holden. All right, week has come, Ohio State, Oregon, Ohio State a three and a half point favor on the road. Sounds about right. Both teams, for the most part, have performed up to expectations this season, minus a few performances here and there, namely speaking of Oregon. And I think this should be a really good game. I think Ohio State has a little bit of an edge as far as roster talent. Oregon's got the home field advantage. I think that the matchups are extremely interesting. So I want to run through both teams. I want to talk about my thoughts on each team, how the matchups play out and which ones play out in each team's favor. And I want to explain how I think the game's going to go. And then I'll make a prediction at the end of the video. So I want to start off Ohio State. Will Howard has been about what I thought he would be at this point in the season. The hard part about Ohio State is that they haven't really played anybody that has challenged them yet. Iowa, you know, defensively can present some challenges for people. But for Ohio State, they weren't just they just weren't going to be able to score enough to be able to keep up with them. And they were never going to really make Ohio State sweat. So even that is kind of not the best barometer. It is interesting to see how much all these statistical categories are going to mean when it comes to this game. Because Ohio State is first in points per game allowed, first in yards per game allowed, fourth in points per game on offense, and then ninth in total offense. So statistically, they're incredible. But look who they've played. They haven't really played anyone with a pulse. And even Ohio State fans know that. Oregon, on the other hand, kind of the same story. Now, Boise State is sort of turning out to be one of the best group of five teams, if not the best group of five team. And Ashton Genty is one of the best players in the country. Now, Oregon didn't slow him down. Let's be, let's be completely 100% honest about that. Oregon did not slow him down. But that win at this point is starting to look like a pretty good win. So they have that to boast. But even with all the other games that they've played against virtual nobodies, they're still not comparing to Ohio State into the statistical categories. 21st in points per game allowed, 10th in yards per game allowed, 32nd in points per game on offense, and then 26th in total offense. So definitely not to the Ohio State standard. That being said, what gives me hesitation about putting any stock into these statistical categories is that when you talk about teams that have exceptional talent, we're talking about Georgia, we're talking about Alabama, Ohio State, at, at any given moment, they can turn it on, flip a switch, and then play out of their mind and play a lot better than they did in some of these, you know, more meaningless games, quote unquote. You look at Oregon against Idaho, you really think that that same team is going to show up in this game? Absolutely not. And that was week one and anyway. So I think that it might expose some flaws in Oregon as in, in, in terms of how consistent they are. But in terms of what their ceiling is as a team, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So do not look at that Oregon-Idaho game and automatically think that because of that game, Ohio State is going to take this game. You know, Oregon is not that team. They are the team that showed up the last three weeks. The last three weeks, they have won each game by three touchdowns or more. So I would put more stock into that, how they're playing recently, as opposed to how they played week one. When week one, most teams aren't exactly what they're going to be later in the season. Oregon, I think is certain that's certainly the case. Absolutely. And I will say, I do think that a lot of these matchups favor Ohio State. And this is simply due to the roster. The roster is incredible for Ohio State. I mentioned Will Howard has played up to expectations. I think Quinshawn Judkins and Trivion Henderson have at least done that. They have been phenomenal. Both of them have run for over seven and a half yards per carry. Both of them have four plus touchdowns on the season. In Quinchon Judkins' case, he's getting a little bit more volume. So he's got uh, over 100 yards more than Trayvon Henderson. But both of them have been outstanding. And both of them are a matchup nightmare for Oregon. Even though I do have a lot of confidence in Oregon's rush defense against this offense, it's a, it's a very difficult matchup. I liken it to how it is extremely difficult for any defense to defend the Texas passing game. It's similar, in a sense, in defending the Ohio State running game because this scheme of Chip Kelly is set up so that they have success against almost any defense they play. Because of the misdirection, because of the way that they pull linemen, 
it's just a very, very difficult offense when you have all of that eye candy in addition to the immense amount of athleticism that Ohio State has all over the field on offense. It is just incredibly difficult. Obviously, I couldn't go this video without mentioning Jeremiah Smith. He is the best receiver on Ohio State. All the respect to Emeka Ibuka, Jeremiah Smith is the best receiver on Ohio State, like I said he would be before the season started. He's the best receiver. He's the most talented receiver. He's one of the most talented receivers in the country, clearly. And by the time he's a junior, he probably will be the best receiver in college football. It's going to be either him and Ryan Williams. It's going to be one of the two. So he's going to be outstanding in this game, I have a feeling, because... Big time players make big time plays in big time games. I think he's going to be fantastic. He only has 23 receptions on this season, and yet he leads the team in receiving yards. 453 receiving yards on the season. And he's and he's making like spectacular plays. It's not even just hitch routes or slants. It is extremely difficult catches. Now, does that mean he needs to get more separation? Potentially. I don't think that that's going to be a huge problem in his career at all. I think he can get plenty of separation when he needs to, but it is incredible the contested catches that he can make. You know, you see him reaching out with one hand, the body control, you know, it's it's different from what we see from Ryan Williams, very different, absolutely, but it's just as jaw-dropping. It's incredible. And he is a guy that there is not a single DB on Oregon, including Jabbar Muhammad, that can guard Jeremiah Smith. Because Jabbar Muhammad's a ball hawk, no question, but... He can get beat at times. Jeremiah Smith is a guy that I think kind of is his freezing point. I don't I don't think Jabbar Muhammad matches up incredibly well with Jeremiah Smith. There's just too much size, too much athleticism. I don't think it's a great matchup for him. So what has to happen is that Oregon has to get enough pressure on Will Howard that he doesn't have time to get the ball to these guys. Oregon has to have a very formidable pass rush in this game. It cannot be just neutral, up to standard. It has to exceed the standard because Ohio State will be able to run the ball. There's nothing that Oregon's going to be able to do to stop the Ohio State run completely. They might be able to slow it down, stack the box a little more in this game, potentially. It exposes you downfield, but Will Howard's not the best downfield passer. So I think that Oregon really has to get a ton of pressure on Will Howard in this game. I think they have to be aggressive on defense. I do not think Oregon can win this game playing bend but don't break defense. They just can't. Ohio State's going to be able to mow them down. And they have the guys to do it. They absolutely do. You look at guys like Jordan Birch, Mateo Yu. I mean, these are guys that I think can really make a huge impact in this game. I expect that they'll have solid games. I don't know that they're going to have be the game breakers that you saw from Ohio State when JT Tuimoloa was going off against Penn State. And I'm not expecting that from the Oregon edge rushers. But they need to be putting consistent pressure on Will Howard every time he drops back to pass. They have to try their best to make Ohio State one-dimensional. Even if Ohio State is able to have success on the ground to the point where they're still putting points up on the board, Oregon cannot let this game get away from them because of the other side of the ball. And that is the Ohio State defense. And I have total faith in the Oregon offense. I rank them as the number one offense in college football going into the season. And in a lot of ways, they've kind of lived up to that. Dylan Gabriel has thrown for over 1,400 yards. Now, they haven't always looked like that at all times every single game. But they have shown flashes of where they were last year, which was incredible with Bo Nix and Troy Franklin and all those receivers. This time... It's Tez Johnson who's leading the receiving room, and he's been phenomenal. 43 receptions, 395 yards, 5 touchdowns. My question is, where has Evan Stewart been? Evan Stewart is one of the most talented receivers in the country, and he is hardly being utilized. He has 16 receptions. Where is Evan Stewart? Why pick up Evan Stewart in the portal if you're not going to use him? He is an incredible weapon. So I have to believe that a lot of that has to do with the competition Oregon was playing, the feeling like they didn't necessarily need to get all of their playmakers involved, that they could be a little bit more less or a little bit less creative with their play calling. But in this game, Evan Stewart better be utilized. And if he's not utilized and Oregon loses this game, then I think a lot of Oregon fans are going to be a little bit frustrated with this play calling and not maybe not necessarily the play calling, but just the scheme and the way that they're utilizing their personnel. You got to use Evan Stewart. Now, Treshawn Holden has been pretty good this season. 
And I knew he could be. Trey Fatpolin's a really good receiver. He's an underrated receiver, absolutely. He came from Alabama. He had kind of an up-and-down career there with some drops, but very athletic, talented player. And he's been a lot more consistent at Oregon. So he's a guy that isn't on a ton of people's radar, but he's very, very good. The running game has been pretty good with Jordan James. He's got over 500 yards rushing on the season, running for six yards a carry. Now, Noah Whittington isn't bringing that same success as the number two back. So they were really only one deep at running back right now. And as much as I like Jordan James as a, as a fit for this Oregon offense, I don't think he's the type of back to be able to dominate a defense like Ohio State because this defense is phenomenal. And look, at times, they haven't looked quite as good as I expected them to look this season. But again, because of the competition, it's so hard to gauge where their ceiling is at at this point. And because I haven't seen them play any close games yet, I have to believe that their ceiling is exactly where I thought it could be going into the season. And that's one of the best defenses in college football, in my opinion, probably the best defense in college football and one of the best defenses that we've seen in the last few years because of the amount of talent. I mean, look, Think about the defense last year they had last year, which is top three in the country. You add Caleb Downs, you return all those guys who are now one more year of experience under their belt. This Ohio State defense can be incredible. I do want to see them improve um, their pass rush because pass rush, I think, has been a little bit disappointing so far. JT Tui Molo, Al Jack Sawyer, their potential, I think, is carrying them a lot right now, especially JT Tui Molo. Wow, he's had a few dominant games in his career. But other than that, you know, he's been kind of a ghost out there at times. Jack Sawyer started to come on a bit last year. Still want to see a little bit more from him. But in general, if you look at across the board, this Ohio State defense is so deep. And in a game like this, when everyone's going 100% and their number ones are out on the field for most of the game, if not all the game, then I think that we're really going to see what this defense can do. And I think it's going to be really difficult on the Oregon offense. But Oregon's going to get there still. Dylan Gabriel is extremely experienced. They still have a very good scheme in terms of the way that they balance the run and pass. I know it's very pass heavy, but they use the run very uh, intentionally and, and they use it in a way that they're able to scheme open holes and find space. I really do think that Oregon has an opportunity in this game to pull off the upset. It's crazy that I'm saying that a number three team in the country has to pull off an upset in their own place, but that's the kind of team that they're playing here. So three biggest matchups in this game to watch out for, in my opinion. One, not a head-on-head -head matchup, but it's Dylan Gabriel versus Will Howard. Who is able to come through in the clutch moments? Who is able to stand up to the challenge, look confident out there? That's what I'm looking for. Both of them very experienced. Dylan Gabriel, probably the most experienced quarterback this year, if not one of the most experienced of all time. Will Howard also very experienced, but he hasn't played in a game of this magnitude, so I'm interested to see how he handles the pressure of the moment. Second big matchup, Oregon's front seven versus the Ohio State running game, offensive line, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be huge because, like I said, I don't think Oregon can stop the Ohio State running game, but the question is, to what extent are they able to slow it down? You need to be able to slow it down at least a little bit. Because if you can't slow down the Ohio State running game and they don't even need to throw the ball, it's over. It's over. There's no, there, you're not gonna you're not gonna win the game. You're not gonna be able to put up enough points on the board. And then the third big matchup: Oregon's wide receivers versus the Ohio State defensive backs. The Ohio State defensive backs, I think, have not shown their best yet this season because of the competition. Oregon's wide receivers are the best wide receiver group in college football outside of Ohio State's own wide receiver core. So these receivers, Tez Johnson, Treshawn Holden, Evan Stewart, against the likes of Denzel Burke, Lathan Ransom, Caleb Downs, Davison Igbenosin, Jordan Hancock. I mean, oh, I mean, these two position groups are absolutely stacked. Who wins that? And those three matchups, I think, are going to decide the game. So who do I think is going to win this game? Austin Stadium is a really tough place to play in. There's no question about that. It's an extremely underrated stadium. I think more people are starting to catch on to how difficult it is to play there, but it's still extremely underrated. 
And I still don't think it's going to be enough. The crowd's going to be enough to beat Ohio State. I think Ohio State is just too loaded. I think we're yet to see the best from them. And I'm going to take Ohio State to win this game by two touchdowns. I think they're going to win 34-20. to 20. I think it's going to be close throughout the entire game. Ohio State's going to be up by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. They're going to have a dagger touchdown to win it. That's what I think is going to happen because of the amount of faith I have in this Ohio State team. Now, let's not understate just how good Oregon can be this season. But I think Ohio State gets them in their stadium and remains undefeated on the season. Probably moves to number one. As they probably should be because they're that good. So, let me know your prediction in the comments below. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. I love to keep doing this for you guys. I love to make these videos and talk college football. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.